The story. This story began on January 2, 2018, with the tragic murder of a 32-year-old businesswoman, Simone Campbell Collymore, and 36-year-old taxi operator, Winston Watson. The streets of Red Hills, St. Andrew, Jamaica, turned into a scene of horror as both individuals were fatally shot dead around 4 p.m. on Stanley Terrace. Welcome to Backyard Crimes. Hit the subscribe button and bell to be notified of more crime stories. Simone and Omar Simone Campbell Collymore, the cherished firstborn daughter of her parents, was hailed as the epitome of perfection by her father. A blend of grace and determination, Simone excelled as a wife, mother, and entrepreneur. Her life intertwined with that of Omar Anthony Best Collymore, a U.S. citizen, in a whirlwind of romance and commitment. They exchanged vows on May 6, 2010, in Miami, Florida, embarking on a journey that led them to Jamaica, where they nurtured their family with the arrival of a daughter and a son. Their transatlantic lifestyle saw them shuttle between Jamaica and South Florida, where they managed multiple businesses and owned residential properties. However, beneath the facade of prosperity lurked shadows of Omar's past encounters with the law. Before crossing paths with Simone, Omar's history bore the weight of legal troubles, including charges of grand theft and instances of stalking and domestic violence. Despite Omar's troubled past, Simone stood by his side, unaware of the darkness surrounding his wealth. She believed his claims that his affluence stemmed from a car accident in the United States. However, as events unfolded, the appearance of their picture-perfect life began to crack, revealing a tangled web of deceit, infidelity, and betrayal. Simone's Parents Simone's father, once describing his relationship with Omar as perfect, found the foundations of trust shattered by a chilling remark made by Omar. In September 2017, while Simone's parents were away in Mexico, a distressing phone call from Simone's sister relayed Omar's ominous words, that he is going to watch this family crumble. These words, spoken in the heat of an argument with Simone, reverberated with ominous intent. At that time Simone and Omar were living in her parents' house. When Mr. Campbell and his wife returned home, he said Omar had already moved out, leaving behind a rift that strained the once-ideal father-son relationship they shared. Their bond, once so close that they exchanged clothes and terms of endearment, now fractured under the weight of Omar's alleged words. Mr. Campbell said Omar referred to him and his wife as Pops and Mom. The whole family decided to get counseling from a pastor in December of that same year. During the counseling session, Mr. Campbell said he sought clarity from Omar about what he said. But he noted that Omar didn't answer. Mr. Campbell said one day in December, Omar asked to speak to him and his wife. Omar started the conversation, but Mr. Campbell told the court he interrupted it because he didn't appreciate what was being said. He said he had expected an apology for what had transpired. The conversation ended abruptly. With wounds unhealed and trust eroded, the once unbreakable bonds of family now hung by a thread, tested by the turbulent events that would follow. Angela Aguiar With the murder rate continuing to spiral out of control in Jamaica, the slaughter of Simone could have been easily misconstrued as just another senseless killing, but for one crucial aspect, Omar lost his previous girlfriend in a similar fashion in 2008, as he was the was the sole witness to the murder of his then-girlfriend, 38-year-old Angela Aguiar in downtown, Fort Lauderdale, USA. She was a wealthy real estate agent and a mother. This cast a shadow of suspicion over Omar's involvement in both tragedies. According to Fort Lauderdale police reports, when the officer responded to Angela's murder scene, he saw Angela in the arms of Omar on the ground near the passenger side of their Ford F-150 truck. Reportedly, Omar told police that he and Angela were on their way to meet with friends at a downtown Fort Lauderdale bar around 3.30 a.m. when he parked the vehicle and got out of the driver's side, bent down to tie his shoelaces, then he heard a commotion and he stood up. According to the report, Omar's statement was that when he stood up, he walked around the back of the truck and saw a white man who appeared to be homeless standing next to Angela with a gun. As he ran for cover, he heard gunshots. When he returned to his vehicle he found his girlfriend dead with gunshot wounds. Her killer was never found. Omar was a suspect in Angela's death, 
but the Florida police were not able to link him to the murder. Angela suffered from two gunshot wounds, one in the back of her neck and then one through her back. The bullets were found in the dash and through the door. She died from her injuries. Simone Fast forward to January 2, 2018, a date etched in tragedy. Simone and Winston's lives came to a brutal halt in a flurry of bullets. Here's how it went down, Simone, no longer living with Omar, hopped into a taxi to Omar's apartment complex to pick up their kids. It was supposed to be a routine handover, but fate had other plans. As they neared the apartment complex, terror struck. Two figures on motorcycles appeared out of nowhere, guns blazing. In a hail of bullets, Simone and Winston were mercilessly gunned down, their lives extinguished in an instant. The sheer brutality of the attack left no room for escape or negotiation. Simone, in particular, bore the brunt of the onslaught, with bullets raining down on her 21 times. The crime. The shooting was caught on CCTV. Surveillance footage showed a black car with the two victims driving towards the gate. Two bikes followed, and when the car came to a halt, two men hopped off bikes. One approached the vehicle, opened the driver's side of the door and fired multiple shots into the car. While this was happening, the other men were running around frantically. The car then started moving down the hill, one man followed, the next man ran backwards, then forward toward the car, then the car rolled through the open gate, one man followed to finish off the killing, then two men were seen running back up the road. The men seemed extremely confused, amateurish, and insecure during the entire hit. Simone and Winston, innocent victims caught in the crossfire, met their tragic end at the hands of these assailants. Winston, a husband, and father, became an unwitting casualty of a senseless act of violence, his life cut short in a tide of evil and despair. The Deception This murder exposed a web of lies and infidelity in what seemed like a picture-perfect marriage. It is alleged that Omar had several simultaneous affairs. Simone, fed up with what seemed like never-ending marital problems, moved out of their home only a few days before she was killed. As the bullets rained down on Simone, Omar's response was chillingly inadequate. Witnesses recounted his sluggishness in rushing to Simone's aid, a terrible indictment of his callous disregard for her well-being. Why kill Simone and Angela? The mystery deepens, why would anyone target Simone and Angela, two vibrant women central to Omar's life? Both Simone and Angela were ambitious, loving, outgoing, popular, and well-loved by their family and friends. The unsettling truth emerges, both women fell victim to a deadly ambush, their lives cut short under suspicious circumstances. What ties them together? A common thread of life insurance policies, with Omar as the sole beneficiary, raises eyebrows and stirs speculation. About a month before she was killed, Angela purchased a $1 million life insurance policy. In August of 2010, two years after Angela's death, Omar filed a lawsuit against Angela's life insurance company for the proceeds of the life insurance policy. Waiting two years before filing cut out a lot of legal issues. The payout was $1,138,841 but Angela's son, Elijah Aguiar, filed a cross-complaint. Omar received $400,000 and Elijah received the rest. Shortly after the insurance payout, Simone and Omar purchased a home in Florida with a $219,000 mortgage, funded in part by the payouts. Five months after Simone was murdered, Wells Fargo started foreclosure on the home. The orchestrated attack on Simone was allegedly orchestrated by Omar, driven by his desire to access Simone's insurance funds. Simone reportedly held a life insurance policy valued at $600,000, although her mother claimed she saw a policy worth $120 million. That may be Jamaican currency. Omar swiftly moved to capitalize on his wife's insurance policy. However, his plans were ruined when he fell victim to a shooting on January 19, 2018, just four days before Simone's funeral. The attack occurred in the parking lot of the insurance company, as assailants opened fire on Omar's vehicle shortly after parking. Omar and another individual sustained minor injuries and were treated at a hospital.
In a desperate attempt to evade justice, Omar tried to flee Jamaica using a false passport two weeks before the funeral. However, his efforts were thwarted when authorities apprehended him at Norman Manley International Airport. Subsequently, a warrant was issued for Omar's arrest, prompting a wide-scale manhunt across the island. By this time, two other persons were already in custody, as police hunted for other suspects. Despite the gravity of the situation, Omar remained elusive, evading capture until he was found hiding at a guest house in the parish of St. Elizabeth, where he was allegedly planning to leave the island by boat. His absence during funeral arrangements and failure to attend Simone's funeral added to the gravity of the situation, deepening suspicions surrounding his involvement in her demise. The Suspects Omar Best Collymore and his three co-defendants, Michael Adams, Dwayne Pink, and Shaquille Edwards, are currently facing trial in the Home Circuit Court for their alleged involvement in the contract-style killings. They have been formally charged with two counts of murder each, along with a count of conspiracy. One of Omar's co-accused, Wade Blackwood, admitted his guilt in being one of the shooters in the incident. He was sentenced on March 11, 2021, receiving two life sentences for the murders and an additional eight and a half years for illegal possession of a firearm. These sentences are to be served concurrently. While initially eligible for parole after 35 years, Wade's plea deal reduced this term by 15 years, making him eligible for parole after serving 20 years. The Trial February 2024, six years later, during the trial proceedings, Omar, noticeably thinner than before, welled up with tears while observing his father-in-law testify. With emotional strain, Simone's father recounted an ominous threat Omar had made three months prior to Simone's demise, vowing to witness the family's downfall. It was disclosed in court that the couple had resided with Simone's parents since 2010, but Omar relocated following a falling out, prompting Simone to follow suit shortly thereafter. Describing a stark contrast in their work ethic, Simone's father shared with the jury, while his daughter diligently managed the couple's two businesses, Omar drifted away, indulging in excess partying and other distractions. Earlier in the trial, Simone's visibly distressed mother, who had also succumbed to tears, recounted discovering life insurance policies in a safe within the couple's office after Simone's passing. Among these policies, valued at $120 million, was Simone's insurance, with Omar and their children listed as beneficiaries. Under questioning from Omar's attorney, Simone's mother revealed the existence of a policy for Omar and their children but couldn't recall its value. She also disclosed that it was the parents who took charge of the funeral arrangements, noting Omar's absence at the service. His lawyer asked if she was aware Omar had been shot before the funeral. Further questioning revealed that counseling sessions were sought to address marital infidelity, though the guilty party remained ambiguous. Allegations suggested Omar's infidelity played a significant role in the marriage's breakdown. Convicted murderer, Wade Blackwood testified in court about Simone's murder. Wade said he was part of a gang and was forced by the gang leader, Jim, to kill Simone. He claimed that Jim offered $2 million to one of the other shooters. Wade admitted to his involvement in the shooting, stating that he feared for his life and his mother's safety if he didn't comply. He revealed that another man, Dwayne Pink, was contracted for the killing, and Michael Adams was involved too. Wade also mentioned that Omar wanted him to lie in court to clear his name, suggesting that Simone had paid Wade to kill Omar but that it backfired. However, Wade stressed that Omar was the one who ordered the hit. Simone's sister said Simone was an entrepreneur and Omar was her partner. She said her sister and Omar had $600,000 life insurance policies, naming one another as beneficiaries. The Situation Florida law enforcement is collaborating with Jamaican authorities with a renewed determination to unravel the mystery surrounding Angela's murder. Angela's family hopes that new leads will come from the renewed interest in the case. At this point, Omar has not been convicted of murder or conspiracy, but the trial is ongoing. Simone's family and Angela's family hope justice will be served. Both of these families had daughters who thought they were with a man that loved them. Do you think Omar's words, will watch this family crumble, was made because he planned to kill Simone? Our sincere condolences go out to Simone's and Angela's families, friends, and loved ones. Please subscribe and leave a comment below. We would love to hear what you think. We will see you in the next video.
Until then we hope you watch another video on this channel for another crime story.